this that we are just live in total. How many know the devil can't steal your joy away if you're meditating upon that? And this is the reason why we have this songs. Are you washed in the blood? And here's another one. What can wash away my sin? <laughs> oh, and here's one. Um, oh, the blood of Jesus. I want, I want you to sense that right now, that precious blood of Jesus is a powerful agent to reach out his hand to you and say, come boldly into my presence. Amen? All right, verse 20. This is by a new and living way. You know, uh, this morning I was coming down here, and Renee usually drives to Batesburg, and um, I thought, my glasses are a little dirty. Dirty. So I reached over and got a little these cleaning towels I get at Walmart. They're little packets. And I start working on my glasses. I put them back on. It's like, whoa, <laughs> there's a whole new world out there. That is sort of like Revelation. In fact, Renee said, I, I said, Renee, you need your glasses clean. And um, I, so many times she'll clean her own glasses. She hand me her glasses, and they were real dirty and things. And there was a couple of specks I could hardly get off. And one of the real uh, realizations I can hardly clean my own glasses because I can't see anything when they're off my head. Can you relate to that? I, I want to encourage you that we have a living and new way. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way. You know, it is so easy for our minds to drift over. In fact, I want to give you an illustration. I want you to picture with me. Take, go with your mind with me. Here's a train traveling down the tracks. Lo and behold, it's a circus train. Now, lo and behold, there's one of those cars on this train, and there's a giraffe. You see that? Well, this giraffe comes around the edge, this train comes around the edge of the mountain, and there is a tunnel. All right, now I want you to get that totally out of your mind. How many know sometimes those kind of things? Have you ever laid down in bed and you couldn't get something off of your mind to save your life? I want to encourage you. Take your, our minds and our hearts over to Jesus. And if you missed Sunday school this morning, that set of verses is so powerful. Do not worry about anything. How, how many know if we could follow that? If, you could if I could supernaturally give you or you could give me the power to never worry, what our quality of life would go up? How many know if you got around someone and they never worried? I mean, never worried. And you knew it down deep in your heart. You, you would say, I don't know what you're taking, but I need that prescription. Amen? And I want to encourage you. This is the prescription I give to you. Because if God tells you in his word, do not worry or be anxious for anything, or as in the King James Version, do not take care for anything, how many know God has a plan for helping you with that? So this is really what we're doing, a new and living way by which we, he consecrated us through the veil that is his flesh. Now, it's so interesting. I'm going to study that a little bit. The whole thing in the Old Testament that there was a curtain or a veil between the holy place and the holiest of holy places. And it's interesting. Oh, there's a verse that says the, this spiritual holy place could not be set up until the old tent of Moses had been totally, that plan of life had been Paul constantly struggled with people trying to do the law of Moses when he was trying to hand them the grace of God through Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you that in many ways, as long as you and I are in this flesh. Now, is in, I'm checking to see if anybody, it may be Ariana. Pray for Ariana so you can see these are tonsils taken out. We love you, Ariana. You're going to have a lot of people cheering for you. You'll be so much better. You'll be able to swallow. Let's stop right now. Can we pray for you, Ariana? Let's do. Father, we join our hearts together and just cover Ariana with your, per with your peace. And don't let her be worried. We put a hedge of, around her of protection. And, Lord, just give her this procedure, Lord, and let it go so well. And she'll feel so much better. Thank you for our children, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. If she comes to your mind, Ariana, stand up for a minute. Let them see you because some of them don't even know who we're talking about. Look at them so they'll remember to pray for you.
Isn't she precious? I want to I want to I want to encourage you that this is the thing that we're talking about. All right, we're going back here. You and I, even Ariana, are still in this flesh. Now, sometimes grandparents they they don't quite get this. This is the reason why Junior is such a rascal because nobody at your grandma is spanking. But in this flesh, you and I are separated from God. He that is in the flesh cannot see God, and it takes a tremendous amount of faith for us to reach out and into that realm while we're here. But God wants you to experience his re, uh, communion and relationship with him, even though we're still in the flesh. But I want to encourage you. Now, one of the, one of the things, yesterday morning I got up and I thought, oh, my goodness, I can't eat. I, in fact, I got out of bed and I went falling to the floor, and I was afraid to wake up Renee, and I was crawling around the floor, and how in the world am I going to get back up? This morning I got up and I put my, and one thing Renee said, well, maybe if you get up. So about 12 o'clock last night I got up and humbled downstairs and walked around a little bit and went back to bed. But this morning I got up and I had, you roll out of bed if you have a little back trouble and you put your hands down here on this thing and you put all this pressure and then you walk it up. I thought, you know, this is not nearly as bad as it was yesterday morning. Renee asked me yesterday, do you have a contingent plan if you can't preach tomorrow? <laughs> I, I want, my emphasis here is that God is a very present help. Now, Frog has gone through some stuff here in the last couple months. How many know God's brought us, is working with you, amen? amen? And I want, this is so powerful because here's the thing. God, you cannot encourage someone else if you yourself haven't been encouraged. Now think about this. So that one of the first things you got to do is get encouraged in God to, to get yourself satisfied and happy in God and to focus in, and just like our Sunday school lesson, focus in on those things which are true and just and especially lovely. Just dwell on things that are good. And when you do this, this is the powerful thing that God has the power to help you and encourage you. Verse 21 says, And having a high priest over the house of God. Verse 22, Let us draw near with a true... There's no one in the world that can do a couple things for you. The Bible says, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to do that yourself. You, and, and you have so authority and dominion over your thoughts and if you want to have a beautiful life you begin to say i will i can't control this and i can't control that but i want to let you know through the power of the holy spirit you can control this and when this when when you uh, it's like a a war when things come against you and satan wants to put things into your emotions and your thoughts that will control you that will destroy you but Jesus says, I have come that this area may have a life and have it more abundantly. And this is the powerful thing. We have the choice to draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And, and let me stress this. Whatsoever is not of faith. If you have a thought and it's not based on faith, which in, in my humble opinion, I think the vast majority of our thoughts lack faith. And this is where you're here today to hear a thing to build this area up. Our hearts sprinkled from an evil, faithless conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23, let us hold fast the confession. This confession is it's, it's, um, where you say the same thing about God. God tells you right now, Although your sins were as crimson and black, they are white as snow under the blood. Now, you, one of the things I don't know what to do about if you get a, have an angry blow off the an anger or you do something real naughty, but I want to encourage you, I believe you come back and say, God, I failed. You realize that. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins... He's faithful and just to cleanse us and to forgive us and to cleanse us. So when this happens, we 
uh, we cleanse ourselves and we get that clear conscience before God and then we go back to God and there's nothing more powerful than you could get today than for through the ministry of the word you hear something that I say that you can lock on to and say that I will claim that I am under the precious blood of Jesus and Satan has no power over me to condemn me Romans 8 1 there is therefore now no condemnation I want what I, I totally release you as a body of believers from any guilt or condemnation in Jesus Christ amen now if you go steal a sack of potatoes or something today we'll have to deal with that <laughs> how do you know if you keep doing something wrong there, there's repercussions about that all right let us hold fast this confession of our hope without wavering and this is where i think so many times it's so challenging for he who promised is faithful now write this verse down first john 10 13 it says that he is faithful and just now let me see it says first uh, corinthians 10 13 it says there is no temptation taken you except which is common and I, one thing i want to say there's not a person in here that has a, a super strange situation going on that god's not aware of or that God can't help you with. There is no temptation taking you, but which is common. Now think about this. So that's the thing, like I'm having a little issue with my back. Now thank goodness that most of you are not. But how many know every, every person in here is facing little things like that? Now, see, sometimes you can hide it, but I have a hard time. <laughs> I tried to walk as clear as I can, and then he said, uh-huh, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Hush. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> thought it was pretty funny. I think we should get in the <laughs> But every per, whatever challenges you're facing, they are common to man. But listen to this. God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you are able. And he will provide. He's the God of provision. He will help you. And this is the reason why it's so important that we draw near to him. Verse 24. This is the verse that drew me to this section. Let us consider one another our invitation today is lay some soul upon my heart I believe the cornerstone to having a, an abundant victorious Christian life is to quit dwelling on us and consider others situation because when you start looking at other situation you realize we may have it rough, but our house is still standing here in Batesburg, although they're not in the Bahamas. We, we may have it rough, but there's other places that have a whole lot more or less rain than we do that need rain. Lay some soul upon my heart. 